The Cordyceps Infection, the strain that devastated the millions of lives in the Last of Us universe. As you watch it turn regular humans into these ravaging monsters in its pursuit of continually spreading the disease. So let's delve into and discuss the scary truth of the Cordyceps Infection as we cover what it is, where it came from, how it started, and the ending for those who were infected by this fungal strain. <laughs> Anyways, what is up you guys, this is Heydeva, and in this video, I'd like to invite you guys as we explore some of the lore behind the Cordyceps infection. So stay tuned to the end of the video as we answer some of the mysteries that surround this fungal strain. Anyways, before we get started, please feel free to smash that like and subscribe button for more Last of Us videos in the future. Alright, so let's start off with a discussion of what the infection is and how it infects and spreads to different hosts. So the Cordyceps infection is a type of fungal strain that's usually found in the more tropical, humid forest areas of the world. So in this case for the Last of us, it started in South and Central America, but I'll get to that in a little bit. Anyway, so the way the fungus works is by infecting its host, either through airborne spores or in the Last of Us universe's case, being bitten. <laughs> So once infected, the fungus will start to have control of its host, housing itself in the brain and making it do actions that would help procreate the spread of this fungal disease. So one of the scary truths about this is the fact that here in real life, we actually have this fungus already affecting many living organisms. With one prominent example of this was with the ants, because as we see here, after the ant has already been affected by the cordyceps fungus, it starts to move erratic and very different from the rest of the ant colony. So mind you, ants are very meticulous and pretty much set in their way when it comes to doing their job for the better sake of their colony. But once these ants are infected, their meticulous nature has now been replaced with an abnormal behavior, which starts to trigger the other ants to alienate this newly infected insect, bringing it far away from the colony as much as possible, because the repercussion of keeping this fungal infected ant close by the colony can devastate their population, possibly wiping it out. And I say this because the cordyceps infection would have the infected ant move to a certain higher elevation, with the right temperature and humidity, putting them in the ideal situation of spreading its spores on the insects right below them. And how it does this is by having the cordyceps fungus start to grow outside of the head of the infected as we see here. Then after a while, the spores can then be used to spread more of its strain. So now going back to The Last of Us, the general premise of its spread is relatively the same. But this time, instead of infecting ants or insects, the cordyceps infection has now mutated and is now capable of infecting humans. Jimmy! Dad? Honey, come here, come here. Jimmy, Jimmy, I am warning you. No. So at the beginning of The Last of Us, they give us a small details of a spread already, where we see on the newspaper saying that there was an increase of 300% to the local hospital's admission due to a mysterious infection. And we also find out that the source could have been from South and Central America like I mentioned earlier. And the FDA has warned about these produce being contaminated with mold, even with some companies starting to recall their food products from store shelves. We also get a small hint to the people who were infected with the cordyceps fungus, which is shown at the bottom of the page, stating that there was this crazy woman who killed her husband and three others. Also another telling sign was when Sarah gets a quick glimpse from a news broadcaster, where she reports, you in here? Seem to be somehow connected to the nationwide Where the pandemic. heck are you? We've received reports that victims afflicted with the infection show That's signs nearby. of increased aggression and out of here now. There's a gas leak. Hey, there seems to be some commotion here. coming from Let's get the hell out of here, bro. <laughs> But of course, once something like this has already been announced by the general media outlets, it's already too late. Because as we play through the beginning of this game, following the perspective of Sarah, as we watch our environment turn into chaos, seeing the spread of the cordyceps infection and the ravaging of the local citizens. <laughs> Keep looking at me, baby. Over there. All right, so with the general premise of how it started and how it affects its host, let's move on and talk about how it progresses with the infected in The Last of Us and how it could be so lethal to the point of almost causing the human race to be in the brink of extinction. Because as the same as the ants that were infected, the humans with the cordyceps strain start to act very different. With the best examples, we're shown with Tess and Sam. Because once these two were infected, we can see the bite marks already showing its progress, and the individuals in this predicament now only has a short amount of time before they're finally succumb to the fungus's will, like shown here. Sam? <laughs> Sam! What the hell? <laughs> ah, shit, he's turning! <laughs> That's my fucking brother! <laughs> Screw it! 
Shit. Really? Ellie, are you all right? Uh -huh. So after the initial infection, these people would eventually turn into what they call runners, which are the infected who have these highly aggressive tendencies, being so unrelenting as they attack any unsuspected victim. Also, they still retain their vision and would swarm in packs, making it very difficult to deal with them in numbers. Anyways, after several weeks or months, these individuals who were infected would now continue to progress in their mutation, now having the cordyceps fungus noticeably protruding out of their head. Also, these infected would now start to croak, setting up the beginning to the echolocation ability for their next stage of their infection. Anyways, that's the same with the runners, the stalkers, hence their name, who stalk their victim because they can still take advantage using their slightly impaired vision and attack anyone on sight. So once these stalkers have been infected for roughly a year or so, they would now enter their next stage of their infection, now becoming the infamous clickers. Clickers? Shit, go, go, go. with the most prominent trait from these infected is their lack of eyesight due to the fungal strain fully enveloping around their head area, now making that clicking noise. with the reasons using those clicks is due to their use of echolocation like I mentioned earlier, which this is an ability that allows this user to use sonar noise that can be spread throughout an environment, and that sonar noise would bounce back from objects or people, allowing this user to identify its surroundings, which this ability is widely used by bats, so in this case in the Last of Us universe, the clickers now have that same ability with also the heightened hearing capabilities, making them very dangerous when traversing recklessly, because any tidbit of noise can have you swarm and the bad thing about going up against these monsters is that they can instant kill you if you don't have the proper equipment. Alright, so the people infected with the cordyceps fungus has shown to be very scary when facing them, but there is one more and final stage to their mutation, being known as the bloaters. Take cover. Which these are known to be the most dangerous and rare forms of the infected, taking years for the cordyceps infection to finally make one of these monsters. Because their most noticeable trait is that they're completely covered with a fungus, almost being used as an armor of sorts, making their overall stature much more intimidating compared to their previous mutations. But not only that, they also have the ability to throw bombs of spore toxins from a faraway distance, damaging anyone in proximity over time. <laughs> Also, they still retain that ability of using echolocation like the clickers, but their noises are much more hoarse and brutal sounding, so the principle of traversing around them is still the same as the clickers, where we have to avoid making any unnecessary sounds. Or maybe we could even divert their attention by throwing objects in the opposite direction, giving us a path to escape. Also, these monsters cannot be evaded once in their grasp, because after being captured, the bloater would proceed to kill his victim instantly, which is highlighted right here. So Ellie and Joel have their hands full when dealing with these monsters, because they can take a lot of firepower to eliminate just one, so making use of any fire based attacks should help us deal with them a little easier. Also, it's a good thing that we only have to deal with them during certain segments of the game, because it would have been a difficult journey to have these bloaters roam around freely in packs. Anyways, in the end, the cordyceps infection is truly a scary thing to deal with, especially since that we know is prevalent here in real life, because only God knows what would happen if the same scenario were to happen like in The Last of Us. 
turning our world into the same chaos driven environment that they have, fighting to endure and survive with these monsters around. Anyways, what do you guys think about the Cordyceps infection and what would you guys do if you were put in the same situation as Joel and Ellie? Please let me know in the comment section down below. Also if you enjoyed the content, please feel free to hit that notification bell icon so you guys can be alerted when I upload my next video and maybe check out my other Last of Us content in my channel. Anyways, again thank you guys so much for watching and as always you guys have a great rest of your day and this is Hey Deva, signing out.